Hi scientists, Maya here. and Bud here, and today we're exploring Earth's moon. From Earth, we can see the moon almost every night and even sometimes during the day. It can be a full circle or a tiny sliver and can appear several different colors. We can easily see the changes in shape, size, and color, but what else do we know about the moon? Let's get out our paper and pencil to take notes. Ready? Ready. Let's go. As always, let's start with the basics and how the moon was formed. Our moon is the Earth's only natural satellite, meaning it's the only naturally occurring body that orbits the Earth. It takes a little over 27 days for the moon to make one full orbit around the Earth. And on average, the moon is 384,400 kilometers away from Earth. The moon is significantly smaller than our Earth. In fact, it's only about one quarter the size of Earth and the moon's total surface area is less than the total surface area of Asia. Even though our moon is small, it's actually the largest moon in the solar system relative to the planet it revolves around. I've seen people slowly bouncing on the moon and staying up for a long time. Even though I don't have legs, it still looks fun. Does this happen because of gravity? It does, bud. There is very little gravity on the moon. The gravity on the moon is 1.6 meters per second squared, while the gravity on Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. This means you'd weigh about 17% of what you'd weigh on Earth. Someone who weighs 100 pounds on Earth would only weigh 17 pounds on the moon. So it looks like people are almost weightless on the moon compared to Earth. What about the atmosphere? Well, the moon only has a very slight atmosphere. Because there is so little atmosphere, there isn't any weather on the moon. This lack of weather means that the terrain on the moon stays basically the same. In fact, the footprints left by the Apollo astronauts 50 years ago look just as fresh today. We can see them in photographs taken from the spacecraft we have in orbit around the moon. You've also probably noticed that the moon has a lot of large craters. That's from objects in the solar system impacting it. Over time, the craters slowly change, either by getting hit with more objects, replacing them with newer craters, or by space weathering, which causes the crater walls to degrade and become shallower. However, the craters are still very, very old. Very, very old? I heard the Earth is over four billion years old. Is the moon that old too? About. It's estimated to be 4.53 billion years old, which is about the same age as our Earth. Does this mean they were formed together? Well, kind of. As with most things in science, we aren't 100% certain how the moon was formed. However, there are a few theories. The most widely supported and accepted one is called the Giant Impact Hypothesis. It says that when the Earth was being formed early on, a smaller object, something about the size of Mars, collided with the Earth and kicked off a lot of material. That material, made up of parts of both the Earth and what impacted it, came together to become our moon. Wow, that's really interesting. How come we don't know for sure that this is what happened? This theory explains the moon's features and shape, but for a while, the makeup of the moon isn't exactly what the scientists would have thought. How so? The lunar rocks that were found on the Earth as meteorites and studied are very similar to the Earth, whereas scientists expected there to be more of whatever it was that impacted the Earth. Of course, scientists are always doing new studies and learning more about the moon. In 2014, scientists looked at lunar rocks collected from previous Apollo missions and found them to be different enough from Earth rocks to add support to the giant impact hypothesis. That's the great part about science. We can always learn something new. I love science. Me too, bud. Now let's give our fellow scientists time to take some notes. Press pause to take notes on the basic characteristics of the moon and how it was formed. Press play again when you're ready. Now let's look at what we can actually see from Earth. Yeah, like, why is the moon always changing shapes? Well, bud, it's not actually changing shapes. What changes is what we see. What does that mean? I'll tell you, bud. Scientists, get your notebooks ready to take notes on the different phases of the moon. You can look up on almost any night and you'll see the moon has a certain shape. Sometimes it's a full circle, and sometimes it's a crescent shape, or somewhere in between those two shapes. The shape of the moon that we see is called the phase. The phase shows how much light from the sun is reflecting off the moon. So the shape of the actual moon never changes, just the way we see it from Earth. Oh, that makes sense. It seems like there's some sort of pattern to what we see. Is that true? Great observation. It's true. The phases follow a specific cycle that repeats every 29 days. Let's go through the cycle, starting with a new moon. A new moon is when the moon appears completely dark. There is no light reflecting off the side of the moon that is facing the Earth. 
This means the sun is on the other side of the moon, so the far side that we can't see is illuminated, and the side we see appears dark. As the position of the Earth and the moon in relation to the sun shifts over time, more of the moon will be visible to Earth. The moon appearing to get bigger after a new moon is called a waxing moon. A waxing crescent is when less than half the moon is visible, but it's getting larger. When half the moon is visible, it's called the first quarter moon. Next comes a waxing gibbous, when more than half of the moon is visible, getting closer to a full moon. A full moon is when we see the moon as a complete circle. The sun completely illuminates the side of the moon that is facing the Earth. Once it reaches a full moon, it'll start getting smaller again. We call this a waning moon. First, it'll be a waning gibbous. Gibbous still means that more than half of the moon is visible, but now it's getting smaller, so it's a waning gibbous. Next is the last quarter moon, followed by a waning crescent and ending back with a new moon, when none of the moon is visible to the Earth. I can't wait to go outside tonight and see what type of moon there is. Me too, bud. Scientists, press pause to take notes on the phase cycle of the moon. So next time when you look up at the moon, you can identify which type it is. Press play again when you're ready. Now that we've gone over the phases of the moon, there are a couple special things that can happen during certain phases. Great, what are they? They're called eclipses. Scientists, be ready to take notes on these. The first is a lunar eclipse, which can only happen during a full moon. This is when the moon passes through the Earth's shadow from the sun. This only happens a few times per year because the moon must be lined up with the Earth in a specific way. During a lunar eclipse, the moon appears red because light from the sun passes through the Earth's atmosphere on its way to the moon. A red moon sounds scary. Not at all. It's just the way the light gets filtered through the atmosphere, like with sunrises and sunsets. Phew. The other special event that can occur is a solar eclipse. This only happens when the moon is a new moon and is lined up perfectly between the sun and the Earth. So the moon appears to block out the sun, either partially or totally. Oh wow, it must be surprising to see something blocking the sun. It is, but now that we know what's going on, we don't have to be worried when it happens. So since the moon is revolving around the Earth, does this mean we're always seeing different parts of the moon? Actually, no. Even though it's a sphere that is revolving around us, we only ever see one side of the moon. The moon is tidal locked with Earth, which means that it's rotating on its axis at the same rate that it orbits the Earth, so we always see the same side of the moon. We call it the near side of the moon. The other side of the moon that we never see is sometimes called the far side. Wow, I can't wait to go to the moon. Send me to the far side. You got it, bud. Now, scientists, you can look up at the sky tonight and know a little bit more about our moon.